and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we've got a puzzle by Kinlux. And Kinlux, of course, has appeared on the channel many times with some beautiful Sudokus, normally with the theme of having to build your own Sudoku. Now, this one I don't think is the same. I think this is a Renban puzzle. It's called Fully Rendered. Um, and yeah, it's got some killer cages as well. I'll read the rules in a moment, but this has come recommended to us by our Discord server and the marvellous people there. If you've not checked it out, do check it out. It must be one of the biggest puzzle communities in the world. I think it's, it's well over 10,000 people actually go there and are members. So lots and lots of puzzle creation, lots and lots of testing and lots and lots of bonhomie. So well worth having a look at. Also worth having a look at is of course this puzzle. Now this puzzle we covered a couple of days ago on the channel. When I first saw it I didn't believe it was possible. It's called White Room by Philip Newman and it is just a normal killer Sudoku but if you look carefully you'll see that only 18 of the cells are covered by killer cages and this solves in the most beautiful way and somehow it exists. We still don't know how. Um, we still don't know how, but Philip has found a masterpiece here. Do check out the video. I'll try and remember to put a, a card on the screen, um, but give yourselves sort of half an hour of absolute joy and wonder by having a go at that puzzle. Any other news? Yes, uh, do keep sending in your entries to Jovial Sudoku Extravaganza over on Patreon. Uh, I think we're up, we're well over 750 correct solutions we've received to those 20. You have to solve all 20 puzzles to get to the point where you get given the word or phrase that you need to send it to us. Um, and yeah, so many of you have enjoyed that. And the other thing that we've got on Patreon at the moment, which is free, is this murder mystery Sudoku hunt created by, amongst other, others, Alice and No Feet McGee. And many of you are loving that as well. So yeah, it's a great time to be a Sudoku hobbyist at the present. Um, now, what are the rules of Kinlux's puzzle? Let me read them to you. We have got normal Sudoku rules apply, good. Uh, each green line contains a set of consecutive non-repeating digits in any order. So this is Renban again. Now we've come across a lot of Renban puzzles and it seems that setters are really enjoying setting puzzles with this constraint. So let's look at those four cells on this green line here. Now what we know is that these have to be a set of non uh, sorry, a set of non-repeating consecutive digits. So if we worked out that square was a nine, then we would know that these three squares would have to be six, seven, and eight in some order. Uh, the order doesn't matter. So it's not like a thermo where you have to put them in an ascending order or anything like that. You can put them in in any order you like. Uh, in cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage and digits cannot repeat within a cage. Ah, and we've got a cage there which is uh, has a digitless total. So this one presumably is only in here to tell us that we can't repeat a digit in it. Those squares there have to add up to 25 without repeating a digit. Uh, I think everything else is, oh no, that one isn't all in the same cage, but it is in the same column. So those have to add up to 11. That's how the rules work. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video. I've got no clue how hard this is, by the way. So the, the video length will be the best guide. Um, uh, yeah, so now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I can't remember if I said all that before. I probably did. Um, so how do we do? Well, I'm going to start with the 11 cage because at least I know what that's got in it. A four cell 11 cage has got to be one, two, three, and five. Um, now, not seeing anything else killer wise. I mean, the five and the six there are a bit suspicious, but I don't see really how to use those. Three lowish digits, definitely in row five. We've got two, two, ah, okay. Well, we've got two five cell Renban lines in the center here. They're sort of symmetrically disposed. Um, but what do we know about a five cell Renban line? Well, it must contain a five. Um, and Whoa, well, not that many fives, just one. There's a five in one of these squares because wh however we select the consecutive digits, from the digits one to nine, you'll always hit a five um, because there are obviously only nine numbers in the digits one to nine. So the middle number will have to always be included. Um, so that means this square is not a five, I suppose, because if you put a five there, it will remove the ability to put five on either Renban line. 
So that's not... In fact, this square is a bit interesting, isn't it? That square... Whatever you put in this square cannot go on either Renbound line. So that seems important. Um, so can we use... Maybe we can use the 25 cage to limit... If we force... Yeah, okay, here we go. Here's, well, here's a very small point. This can't be a six. If that's a six, how are, how are the Remban lines filled? Well, we know they must both be one, two, three, four, and five, because if they can't contain a six, you can never get to the digit, digits seven, eight, and nine on these Remban lines. Now, given if, so if this is a six, these are one, two, three, four, five strings, but now the 25 cage is broken because the highest digits I could put into those four squares would be five, four, three, and two. Five, four, three, and two add to 14. 14 plus six is 20, it's not 25, which is quite tricky, but it's interesting. Now I'm wondering now about four. If I push, so if I put four here, now the minimum, because the Remban lines become five, six, seven, eight, nine quintuples, the biggest these digits could be, or the smallest those digits could be, would be 5, 6, 7, and 8. 5, 6, 7, and 8 add up to 24, I think. Um, that's what I got when I did it in my head. And 5, 6, 7, and 8 plus another 4 is definitely over 25. Um, so that is not going to work either. So that means... What did I say 5, 6, 7, and 8 added up to? Did I say 24? That's nonsense. It's 26. It's, it's weird the way my brain works. I was like, I felt as I said that, that I'd said something incorrect. And it was totally true. So some part of my brain is shouting at me, just as you lot are shouting at me. So it's like I have an audience in my head. Maybe it's that half of my head shouting at that half. I don't know. It feels like it was that way round. Um... But anyway, we can't put four there. So this digit here is actually good lift levels of pencil marking. It's a one, two, three, seven, eight, or nine. We may be able to do to do better than that. Let me just think about this for a second. So um, or maybe I, I won't be able to do better than that. Hang on, let me think about this. If I put... I have a feeling there's a problem with 7 and 8 here. Because, this is a strange reason, if this is a 7, we now know the Renban lines. Are, well, we're selecting from digits from 1 to 6 to create our Renban lines. We can never access the digits 8 and 9 on the Renban lines. And that means I'm faced with a quandary about where I put 8 and 9 in this row. And the answer is they can go nowhere. Well, actually, that's not, no, they can go nowhere. They, ca they can't go here. That's, that is on the Remban line, what's on this Remban line. So 8 and 9 would both have to go in a 6 cage, which won't work. And the same is true of 8, actually, because I've still got the problem now of putting 9 in this row where it can't go. So this square is definitely not 7 and 8. I'm not going to eliminate 9 unfortunately because if you do put 9 here, if you put 9 here you don't have the same problem because you can now put 6, 7s and 8s on the Remban line. Um, now Can I do anything clever with that knowledge then? The answer is I don't know. Oh, I tell you what I can do. Oh, good grief. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Look, look at the six. I know I'm not meant to apologize, but I feel it's, it's warranted. The six cage is a one five or a two four, but we know there's a five on both Renban lines. Now, Hopefully it's not too tricky to see. If there's a 5 on both Renban lines, there must be a 5 in that string of digits. 
And we know that because, because if there isn't, that would imply there's a 5 in those three squares because we know this Remban line has a 5 on it. And there's a 5 in those two squares, which will clash 5s in column 5. So this is definitely not 1, 5. That's 2, 4. That gets rid of a 2 from the middle square. Um, now, now I'm asking myself what that can be. Is that relevant now? Because if that's one four, you then couldn't put four on any Remban lines. And that breaks the puzzle, doesn't it? Doesn't that break the puzzle because it breaks the 25 cage? If this was 1, 4, both Remban lines can't contain a 4, so they have to be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which means these digits here have to be selected from 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Let's make them as small as we can. Well, that's already 26, according to the maths that I did several times subconsciously earlier, and one time consciously, appallingly badly. Um, so that doesn't work. So this well, let's get rid of these pencil marks then. This is not 1, 4 and is 2, 3. Now I can't put 2 on the red pan lines. This is bizarre, this puzzle. I can't put 2 here actually either. But, ah. Yeah. Or no. Uh, no, I was about to say something silly. Well, that, if this is 2, 3, that's definitely not 3. So this is 1 or 9. But if I can't put two on any Remban line, then the digits for the Remban lines are being selected from three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now I need five sixes and sevens on the Remban lines. And the reason for that, of course, if we're, if we're selecting five digits from a string of seven digits, there's no way I'll be able to miss out the six and the seven in creating that string. Okay, so does that matter? Six, seven. So now if I make that a nine, am I gonna be pushed too high for my 25 cage? Let's just think about that. If this is a nine, these squares now don't have the ability to be two. So the minimum these digits could be would be 3, 4, 5, and 6. Which, please go over. Please go over. It's too many, isn't it? It is too many. That is definitely too many. I'm double-checking the arithmetic in my head, but I think that adds up to 27, which is definitely more than 25. So this, we've got a digit. This is a 1, which means that is not a 1. Oh, and ah, that's a 3 because we know there's a five in this string of digits. I could have got, got rid of that five pencil mark earlier. So now we're off and running. We have a digit here. We have a digit here, which is not a five. How is that a five? I don't want that to be a five. There's definitely a five in those. This is a three. Ah, I'm going mad. Um, Okay. Ah, aha. Now there's a three looking down at both Remban lines. So you can't put a three on a Remban line. That means both Remban lines have eights on them. Good grief. Um, now, what does that mean? This 10 cage, maybe, that's catching my eye. I don't know if it should it should be, but I can see it's not 2, 8, or 3, 7. So this is 4, 6, or 1, 9. This is on a Remban line, but this has an absolute multitude of options. Um, I don't really want to pencil mark that, if you'll forgive me. So I now know that... Do I have to be somehow careful about the 24 cage still here? If we put... Uh, it's 
definitely a 1 in there. <laughs> I can see that. The other four squares add to 24. We know that each Remban line individually has 5, 6, 7 and 8 on it. So it's either a 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 quintuple or a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 quintuple. 5, 6, 7 and 8 we know adds... Oh, I see. Yeah, so there's got to be a 4. Ah! No. Nearly. Well, there's got to be a... F oh, yes, this is quite clever. There's got to be a 4 in the 25 cage, because if there isn't, these four digits here would have have to be selected from a minimum of 5, 6, 7 and 8, which we know is too high. So there is a 4 in the 25 cage, and this 2, 4 here means that the 4 is exactly here. And that's rather clever, because now we know what this Remban line is. It's got a 4 in it for certain. So this Remban line is 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. And we know that the 4 is definitely in the cage there. Now. Does that mean it? Does that mean we can tell something about the other Remban line? Yes, it does. It does actually, because we can just ask where 9 goes in row 5. And the answer is, I haven't got a clue where 9 goes, except it's definitely on that Remban line, because it's not in those squares. And if 9 is on this Remban line, we actually know the composition of this Remban line. This is, this is so clever. And we know the 9 is in one of those three squares, so we know it's not up here. Now that looks very like a quintuple and is a quintuple because we can now ask the question where does 9 go in column 5? It must go at the bottom and that must be a 3. That is madness. Um, now 3 is looking one of those two squares. Aha! Now this Renban line now apparently cannot have a 3 on it. And it's a four cell Remban line. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's got to have six and seven on it, which actually might not be very interesting. Um, it's got to have six and seven on it, but I don't think we know where the six and the seven go. Although I might be wrong about that. Um, Do we know the composition of the 25 cage now? Maybe we do. But we've got a 1 and a 4 for certain. That's 5. So we need another 3 cells adding to 20. And we've got to select from... Oh, no, we don't. Bobbins. We've got, we definitely must have 5 in there. Because if we don't have 5, 6, 7 and 8 add to 21. That's too many. So... We must have 5 along with 2 cells that add to 15, which are either 7, 8 or 6, 9. Oh dear. But there is definitely a 5 in here then. Do I know where the 5 goes? Is there some way we can tell? Oh. No, I'm not sure. Um... Sorry about this. I know I'm not allowed to apologise. Uh, it's force of habit. Um, how on earth do we make a bit more progress then? I really don't think I know enough about. You see, these this Remban line, although it's a four cell Remban line, and although I could conclude it doesn't have a two in the ends because of these dominoes here, there could absolutely be a two along the line. So I don't think I know, um, I basically know diddly squat about all Remban lines apart from, I know a bit about this one. I know a great deal about these ones in the middle. Can we do more with these somehow? Ah, yeah, okay. There's something, I can see something maybe, maybe. I think I can use the cage, can't I? This domino. Yeah. What does this mean? Oh, maybe it doesn't do anything, though. 
oh, that's really strange. What I was noticing is that by geometry, these two squares here see an awful lot of row five. So let's just highlight these two squares and have a think about them. Where, do the, where does whatever we put into these two squares go in row five? Well, the answer is not on its own Remban line because Remban lines contain none repeating digits and not repeating in its cage either and not three because neither of these squares can be a three. So one of these squares is a four, which we already knew, and that's mapping to this four here. The two can't overlap with this. So whatever one of these digits is the same as that digit. Ah, now that's interesting because that means this square can't be a nine, doesn't it? Because if this was a nine, it would have to go in here because of the logic we've just described and it can't. So that means that's not a nine, which means that the nine in this row is now in the cage. Oh, this is lovely. So the nine is now in the cage. So now don't I know the composition of this cage? I think I do. It's got to be a six, nine, a five and a four. So I'm going to delete everything from here. Oh, hang on. What did that do? I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to delete everything from that cage. We know the central square is a one. We know the rest of this cage is now four, five, six, nine. And we know the nine is in one of those two squares, therefore not here. We know the four is in one of these two squares, therefore, whoopsie, therefore not there. And, uh, and I don't know what else we know. Um, <laughs> um, can I repeat the trick on this one? Let me just think about that. So this one I would need to think about column five, wouldn't I? So this domino can't go on its own Renban line is not the same as a two or a three so it doesn't go in the five cage it can't go there it can't go in it can't go in its own cage oh good grief right so oh which we already sort of knew these two squares here have to go in those two squares exactly and one of them is a nine which we already know and the other one is a five or a six. So this square is a five or a six, not a seven or an eight. And that seems to give us a four, five, six triple in this column, which means those two squares at the top can't be five or six. So these are now seven or eight, which means that square is not seven or eight because it's on its own Renban line. I've now got a five, six, nine, tri this is crazy. I've now got a five, six, nine triple in row five, which means those two squares are a seven and an eight. I think, I think that was sensible stuff, wasn't it? So now I've got a, I've got whatever goes in here is here. Oh, so this is interesting as well. These two digits are different. So that's interesting. So this digit here goes in one of those two. This digit goes in one of those two. But these are different. Um, hmm. I don't know what that means. I or at least I don't think I know what that means. I might know what that, somebody probably knows what that means. I've now got a seven, eight pair in column, oh, sorry, in box five. Oh, right, that's interesting. Now there must be an eight on this Remban line. Wow, okay, look at this. This is very interesting indeed. These two squares are different. That's self-evidently obvious. Let's make that one red and this one yellow. Um, so that means that one's red and that one's yellow. Now that means yellow is definitely on this Renban line and red 
is still on the Remban line, it's, in, it's just in this box. So this Remban line must contain the digits 7 and 8. We don't know where they go, but we know it's now got an 8 on it. I feel that must matter somehow, so... Um, <laughs> so this Remban line is now either, oh, if it's got, so if it's got nine on it, the nine would go here, which would push a nine into this square, which would push a nine into those squares, which might be okay. If it's not got a nine on it, it must have a five on it, which would also be a very interesting thing for it to have on it. Um, right, here is a strange deduction. I don't know if it matters or not, but can this square be a 6? I don't think so. So the reason I don't think this can be a 6 is that one possibility in the world is that this is a 6, in which case this is not a 6. <laughs> if this is not a 6, then we know this is a 6 which means there's no six on the Remban line there, and there's a six in one of those two squares. So there is always a six in one of those three squares, which means that square is not a six. Now we know that the 25 cage has a, oh no, this is no use, sorry. Ah, um, what are the options for these two squares then? These two squares are from six, seven, eight, and then they've either got five or nine in it. So actually, those four squares together are very high digits. OK, well, where do we put four in this box then? Because I can't put four there on that Remban line because this square doesn't have the ability to be three or five. That's mad. So four is a four is a strange naked single in box in box six, which means four. Ah, no, not quite. We can nearly get four in box five, but not really. Um, four is pushing. Well, it's not really putting pressure on this, is it? If this is low digits, it's lovely. That's got to be one, two, three. Oh, which it can't. Ah, oh, this is just sensational. <laughs> Look at this. That can't be one, two, three. Because if it's one, two, three, where do the one, two, and three go in the 11 cage? Answer, those squares. One, two, three, one, two, three. Where does the one, two, three go in box nine? Those three squares. Now, last time I checked, even with my appalling mental arithmetic, one, two, and three do not add up to 15. So this is not one, two, three. Oh, I see. Oh, look. So now we ask where one, two, and three go in this column. They go there, which means that's four, five, six. That's the only way of making 15 if you can't use one, two, and three. This is seven, eight, nine. Those two squares are four and six. Hang on, so that's got to be a seven, eight, nine triple, hasn't it? A sequence of three digits that's not one, two, three, and four and can't be six either, so it can't access the digit five. That's seven, eight, nine. That's not seven, eight, nine. That means these, we can get rid of some pencil marks here. We've got, ah, I've got a five, six pair in this, so this is now a nine. This is not a nine. Whoa, I just did a whole load of pencil marking there. I didn't mean to do. That's a five or a six, I think. Very tempted to colour fives and sixes. Um, this is not a five or a six or a nine now. So this square is a seven or an eight. Oh. I was about to say, no, that's wrong. Because I was noticing these two squares. But that is, it's right actually, because this is five and six. So we can ask where five goes in the 11 cage, it goes here, which means we've got a one, two pair here. This is a seven or an eight. That's gonna put pressure on that square, which now can't be a low digit because it's got to be consecutive with a high digit. 
So this is a low digit. So that's either six. Well, if this is six or nine, this is one or four. Um, and we still can't resolve it, I don't think. So let's let's again let's tidy up pencil marks and take another stare at this because I've sort of got banding or ribbons. I can't remember what the technical term is for these these strips of one, twos, and threes, fours, fives, and sixes, sevens, eights, and nines. But they don't seem to have actually. Ah, no. Now I can use my. Yeah, now I can colour things in. I've got yellows here, so that's yellow, which means that's red. Oh, okay, it doesn't actually do anything. Um, oh, <laughs> um, one of these is red, I know that. Ah, hang on. There's no possibility of putting nine in here. So we know this Remban line now. So this Remban line, it's definitely got sixes, sevens and eights on it. It must have five as its other digit. So this is a five, let's delete this. This is five, six, seven and eight. And we know that whatever the seven and eight is, it's red. And we know that whatever the other digit is, it's not seven and eight, because we'll then have a seven, eight pair on the Remban line. Um, oh, which is going to mean that's a, f oh you, yeah, we need to color these fives and sixes because I think there's a five, six pair now in box eight, which would make this a four. Let's just do this quickly. So am I going to get any joy from well, yes, we know those two are the same. I'm going to delete those because I think the logic we did earlier told us that this digit needed to appear in one of those two digits and it, we now know it's that one. And blue, well, I think we're going to just, we're about to prove that this is blue. So I'm going to remove blue from there and let's see if we can do it. So we know that this is purple. We know that blue must appear on this Remban line so it's in one of those two squares therefore we know there's a five six pair in those three squares and we know this is a four now we know this square is blue because it's not purple how do people come up with things like this it's just bonkers um, that's not four anymore so actually I'm going to make this a blue-red uh, combination because it's definitely got red in it and it's definitely got blue in it. So four in the central box is in one of those two squares now. I've got... Yeah, okay. And these squares are actually a triple, aren't they? They're a triple on five, six and red. So these squares are other digits oh okay there are one two yellow combination oh if that's true that's got to be yellow oh no 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 well let's that might well be true but now i've got a five six pair in this column i've got i've definitely got blue i've definitely got purple so that square can't also be purple or blue so it cannot be a six that's a nine which means that's a one and that means nine is in oh look at this now i've got a three nine pair in here which forces the four to be there and means that this square is a two and that seems to fix the two and the one over here um and now that square is yellow. Okay, that is a yellow square, but we don't know what it is. At least I don't think we do. Maybe we do. Um, ah, but now those squares have got to be 
four, five, and six. Okay, so there's some strange four, five, sixing going on over this side as well. So now I've got four, five, six, three, nine, and I've got one, two, yellow down here. So this is a one, two, yellow triple, which I think I'll put, I'll, I'll do it like that so that I try and keep track of the full pencil marking. Um, this can't be a three and that, oopsie, whoa, what did I press there? This can't be a three and this can't be a nine. But, and, and I haven't got a Scooby-Doo what to look at next. This Remban line, look, can't have a, th yeah, okay. Ah, okay, so let me explain my thought process there. I saw that this Remban line can't have a three on it. So immediately my uh, my attention turned to where one and two were going to go. Because I, now I know I can't put one and two on the three cell Remban line. Because if I do, I'll need a three on it as well, which can't go there. So now where does one and two go in this, in this row? Well, answer apparently only in those two squares. So that's a little win, isn't it? Now we've got, we might have to color ones and twos. Um, my tummy is grumbling. I'm obviously obviously consuming calories by solving this. Um, so what does that mean? Four, five, six, seven, and eight. So these squares here have got to be selected from four, five, six, seven, and eight. Four, five, six. So there's definitely a six on that line because that's the central digit. And what we can't do, look, is we can't go too high. So this can't be a six, seven, eight triple because that will break this square, which means there is also a five on this Remban line. And that is rather beautiful for this square, which now must be a four. And once this is a four, oh, this is so, so clever. So now this is a five, six, seven triple. Because once we've proved there's a five and a six on it, once we get the, there's no four on it, we get a five, six, seven triple. That's become an eight. Five, six, seven. Um. Hmm. Okay. What does that mean? How am I going to resolve? How am I going to resolve the sevens and the eights? That's an interesting question. Um, one has to be down here, look. I've got a five, six pair in this row. So there's a lot of options for these squares. One's, uh, this, yeah, there's maybe too many for me to pencil mark actually. Um, I've got a two, three pair in row two. Ah, I've got a, ah, hang on. I've got a nine connected to something here that's red and is therefore not seven. So that's eight. And that's quite nice because that does re resolve. It resolves yellows and it resolves reds. Seven is not in those squares anymore. Oh, but we still don't know what... F How are we going to do the fives and the sixes now? It's going to have to be... I don't think we can do the fives and the sixes through the killer cages now. Maybe that one. Oh, maybe this one. That's not seven anymore. So this one is actually not purple either. So this is blue. One of those must be purple. Yeah, okay, so have a look over here. Once this is purple, that's purple, that's blue. Oh, I see. Now that's not blue, so that's that's exactly equal to 8, because we know 8, 8 is red. So this square is now just blue, so we can get rid of the 8. And we've got a purple in one of those two squares, and we've got 
I've just looked at the time. I've been doing this for 40 minutes. I would have said I've been doing it for about 10 minutes. That is always the sign of a good puzzle. If the time just flies when you're doing it. Um, okay, so... Yeah, but I can't see how the killer cages are going to resolve the fives and the sixes. So something on the Ren band lines is going to have to do that for me. But the, one of the difficulties I find with Ren band puzzles is I really don't have, at this stage of the puzzle, for example, a good feel for where I should look next. I sort of want to think about the four cell Ren band line, but I just don't think I know enough about it. These three squares, I guess. Three, five, six, and nine. Let's have a look at that. Now, can we get rid of anything from there? The answer doesn't seem to be. That squares a seven by Sudoku. So those squares are an eight, nine pair. That square can't be a five. Just seen that. Sorry. If You've had that one for a while. Um, so these squares here have got to include a one and they've got to include an eight. Aha, that can't be eight because if that's eight, you're gonna have a trouble. You're gonna to have to put seven in one of those two squares where it can't go. The seven's definitely in one of those two squares. So that's not eight. Oh, okay, so, yeah, I want to think about this square, don't I? So that's that's a good example. So my, my instinct was to try and look up there, whereas I think I should have been looking at this square because of the impact of the 5, 6, 7 here on it. So this row, we've got 1, 3, 6, no, we haven't. We've got 1, 3, 8, and 9 to place. Well, this can't be 9 for exactly the same reason it can't be 8. You put 9 here, you've got to put 7 in one of those two squares and you're going to have a problem. So this is only 1 or 3, which means that... Does it mean anything? Well, it means these two digits have to be relatively low, don't they? Because we can't get up as high as 5. So there must be a two on this line. Oh, I see, that's interesting. So there must be a two on this line, I think. I think that's the point. Um, and that's because whether this is one or, obviously if it's a one, you need to put a two on the line. If it's a three, you can't go up as high as five here. So you're gonna to have to go four, two uh, or two, one, but either way, you've definitely got a two. So we've got twos aligning in columns one and two, which means twos are not in those squares, which means twos are in one of those three squares. Now, can we get rid of two from any of those cells? The answer seems to be yes, because there's a two, three pair in row two. There's a two, not a two in that one. So can that be a two? Oh, it can be a two. Two, three, four would work. That's the only way this could be a two, three, four. How, how can that be a nine? That can't be a nine because this square would have, oh, it can be. No, it can't be, but only just. Okay, if that's a nine, what are we gonna put in that square? Well, the aren't, no, in fact, this definitely can't be a nine. This one might not be able to be a nine either, but this can't be a nine because that square is a three cell Remban. So it would have to be nine, seven, eight, and this would have no fill. So that's not nine. Now, can that one be a nine? This is our four cell Remban. So this square would have to be a six, which would mean this square hasn't got a fill. If that's nine, six, we need to put sevens and eights into those two squares, which we couldn't do. That's not nine. So nine, can I get rid of nine from one of these? If that's a nine, that would be a nine. If that's a nine. One, we'd have an eight, nine pair in box four. Which doesn't appear to be problematic. Um, maybe we look at these squares though, because I'm, I'm quite intrigued by the fact I can rule out almost all of the high digits from these squares. 
So this is going to be proper levels of pencil marking. Now, is that useful? Well, we know that those aren't twos. So can this be a one? That's the first question I'm asking. The answer to that is no, because if it's a one, I need to put two on the Renban line and two can't go here because of this two, three pair. So that's not one. So this looks like a very mid mediocre Renban line, doesn't it? This square, which can't be a two, it could be a three, it could be a four, it could be a five, it could be a six, it can't be a seven. Now, can it be an eight? Surely not, because I can't put seven on the line. So, right, so this Renban line is a three, four, five, six Renban line. And that's not a three, because there's a three in the row already. So now I can get rid of three from that square for what it's worth. And the reason I can do that is if we look at this three, four, five, six quadruple, and it is a quadruple, it's just a very diagonal one. The three on this quadruple is definitely in one of those two squares. So if I put a three here, I could no longer put a three in that quadruple. So I mustn't do that. And the same is, of course, is exactly true of this square. Now, are there any other? No, four has three positions. Five, uh, five has three positions. Six has four positions. So it's probably only threes that are really affected. Now, yeah, but now there's some more pressure. Oh, this is lovely. Right, so now I know where the two goes in box one because it can't go here because we can't connect a two to these digits, we need to be able to put a three in one of them and we can't, so that's not two, which means that's a two, which means that's a two, that's a three, that's a one, that's a three, that's a two. And we have a flurry of activity. Um, we have a flurry of activity that doesn't, seems to just peter out, which seems extremely harsh. Um, Oh, <laughs> oh no, come on, you rotten thing. Oh, no, look at row two. I've got a four, five, six triple now. So these squares have got to be from seven, eight, and nine. Seven, eight, and nine on a Remban line. So that's got to be six, seven, eight, or nine. It's not seven uh, because of the seven here. Oh, it's not seven as well, because that's, you know, look at the triple. The seven in that triple's definitely got to be on the left-hand side. So, no, I was about to say sevens are aligning, but we already knew that. Um, ah, okay. So are there any digits in this box I've not actually given a pencil mark to yet? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, there aren't. We know that this is a three, four, five, six quadruple. What about this one? That can't be a one anymore. Ah, that might be sensible. Yeah, this can't be a one. You'd need to put two on the Remban line. So that means the one in this row is now placed, which means that is not a one. So now, what's this Remban line then? Right. Well, I don't know is the answer. But one thing I do know about it is it definitely has a four in one of those two positions because it must contain a four, this Remban line. And if it's got a four on it in one of those two positions, this square cannot be a four and has to be a six. Now that might be helpful. Oh, there you go. this is going to work, isn't it? Um, maybe. That's no longer a four because it sees a three, four pair. And, oh, come on. Right, yeah, I can keep this. This is just, it's, 
extraordinary setting, I will say that. How you come up with these sorts of restrictions from specifically those squares and how they interact, I have no clue. But can this be a five? No. If that's a five, you can no longer put a five in box two because this will see it. If that's a five, obviously it's ruled out from that square and that square by the Renban line. So that's not a five. It must be a six, I think, which gives us a six and a four and a four and a five. Now this five transposes down the Renban line to here, forcing that to be a six. This no longer can be a three. That's got to be a four, which makes that a three. And this therefore needs to be a five. So now, no, OK, now I get left with a three nine pair in row th four of the grid. This six rules itself out of this square. Now I ask where five goes in this box. The answer is only there. Still don't know what this Remban line has on it, I don't think. Eight, nine pair left in row one. I've got a, f I can't put five there. Or six, actually, that's a seven. Which means that's not a seven. That's not a seven. Oh, so this is now an eight, nine pair and that's a seven. Okay, that's good. Um, and we can, I've now got an eight here actually, so I can get rid of eight from those squares. Oh, I see, so this is a one, two, seven triple, which, I'm not sure if I can do anything about that. I'm not sure, don't know. Ah, but now purple goes in the corner. That doesn't, that's not gonna make a good song, is it? That's purple in the corner. But now if purple's in the corner, it's not five. This is great. So now we get a six as purple. All of those purples become six. All of those squares become fives. I can double click the fives in the grid, turn them all blue. Double click the sixes in the grid. Have I got any other sixes? I have got some. Right, how many sixes have I got? One, two, three, four. I've got nine. How many fives? I've got nine. I've done all my fives, all my sixes. So we can stop thinking about those and worry about the rest of the puzzle. Maybe this column? Ones, threes, eights, and nines into those squares. Ones, threes, eights, nines. That's not eight. This square actually, here's an interesting thought. This is not a three. And the reason it's not a three is because of this Remban line. I know there's a two on this Remban line. Ergo, I know there's a three on this Remban line. I don't know where the three goes, but I know if that's a three, you can no longer put a three in any of those squares. So that's not a three, which actually isn't doing anything for me, but it, that square's an eight by elimination. It's just slightly strange that I, oh, I don't quite know why. Oh, I see. It's the, those eights aligning would have allowed me to see this. Anyway, this is an eight. There's definitely a three in one of those two positions. Um, okay. <laughs> um, where shall I look now? I've probably got to think about what can be on this line, don't I? We know that I'm definitely selecting these two squares from the digits one, two, three, and four, because it can't go as high as five. Now this one can't be a four or a three. So this is just one or two. This one can't be one, which is deeply disappointing. Um, is this, <laughs> oh no, come on. Is there an easy way of seeing what this does? I bet there is. I bet there is. Um, I can't see how to do it. What's this square then? Let's look at this. This square is either from the row, it's one, two, three, seven, or nine. It's not seven. Oh, good grief. It can be, oh, it's not one either. 
one, two, three, seven, or nine. So it's two, three, or nine. Now, is there any reason I can rule some of those digits out of this square? Ah, I can rule two out because the two's on the Remban line. So this is three or nine. Now, can I rule anything else out? Um, it's still it's still being recalcitrant. I think there's probably some sort of Y wingy type trick that we can use to finish this off. But I'm not seeing how to do it smoothly, which is irritating me. Let's have a think about. I think I'm going to almost have to fully pencil mark this. 1s, 3s, 8s and 9s into these squares. And let's see what we can see. So that's not 1, that's not 3. Um, I don't know. 3 is definitely in one of those two squares. Look, in box 7. How do I resolve this? Ah, this square can't be 3, can it? Because that would rule 3 out of both of those positions on the Remban line. So that's not 3. Which means what? Now I've got... Oh, I see. Now I've got an 8, 9 pair. Good grief. Let me just go back to this. Because that is, that's not a simple deduction. There have been so many of these little intricacies. But I think that's true, isn't it? If this is 3... I can't put a 3 on that Remban line. I know it's got a 3 on it, so it's broken. So it's not a 3. I get an 8-9 pair in the column, which makes that a 3. Now I can ask the question, where does 3 go on the Remban line? And it has to be here. And that might actually crack the puzzle open. It gets me 9s, which I didn't have before. This 9 gets me an 8. Yes, come on. Yes. This square is now a 1, force, and that gives me a 2, which gives me a 4. So there was never a 1 on this Remban line. The 1 went here, and this square needs to be a 9. And the 2, 4 get fixed. And I think, I'm not saying anything, but I do feel more confident now. 9 and 7, that's not 7. The only place 7 can go is here. This square is a 1, 2, 3, Two, what, two, one, yes, I think that's it. Yes, wow, that is a very, very clever puzzle and pretty tricky. I've managed to get it done in under an hour. I'm not actually that upset with myself. Um, there was a lot going on from the beginning and the ideas around these Renban lines. Um, in fact, let me just make sure the sevens are consistent because I know otherwise it upsets people and the eights um, but the yeah these two Remban lines at the start did an awful lot there was so much logic around them and I absolutely loved the way I could color this sevens and eights in in fact I loved I loved that domino and that domino and how they worked with the column and the row I then loved the colouring of the 7s and 8s, forcing 8 onto this Renban. I absolutely love the fact this couldn't be a 1, 2, 3, because 1, 2 and 3 don't add up to 15. Um, and there were just a myriad of little bits of logic like that throughout. And it, it the difficulty was incredibly even. So many puzzles you get where you get the break in and then you know it's, it's a bit quicker after that. This was not like that at all. This... Uh, Remban line here was very difficult to disambiguate. Um, yeah, the whole thing's a joy, absolute joy. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I do enjoy reading the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.